Welcome back to the Go Tanium Show. This is your host, Ashley McGlone. And today we are talking about cleanup on Endpoint 5 with threat response. Have you ever been walking through the grocery store and somebody has spilled a jar of pickles in the aisle and you can just smell it three aisles over? It's a mess. Well, you know what? Sometimes IT is like that. We get hung with cleaning up the mess. And unfortunately, sometimes this mess has bordering visibility and you need the right tools to be able to find and clean up those messes. So we have a professional mess cleaner upper with us here today on the show, Stephanie Aceves. Why don't you introduce yourself for us? Hey, thank you, Ashley, for having me today. I'm so excited to talk a little bit deeper about threat response. Um, Professional mess cleaner, that's going to be my new favorite title. Uh, So I've been with Tanium for just over three years now. I'm one of the threat response subject matter experts and have a red team and incident response experience prior to Tanium. So super excited to talk about all things mess cleanup with you today. Thank you. So uh, my question to start off with today is what kind of tool is Tanium threat response? I'm not exactly always in the security space, but I hear people talk about EDR and IR and forensics, and there's lots of tooling out there. Where does Tanium threat response fit? Sure. So great question. Um, Threat response, the way that I like to describe it is as part of the holistic Tanium platform, threat response is going to help you. It's going to be the solution that you use to investigate any of those threats that get past your other protection tools, okay? Investigate and remediate at scale. And that's where that platform comes in. So when your incident doesn't really fit into that neat little box that might be picked up by some of these other tool sets, that's when threat response is gonna come in and with that Tanium platform really excel in showing you everything that's part of your investigation, showing you where else you need to look and then helping you actually do that cleanup on, on aisle five on investigation five. That's where that response is going to be super powerful for for your, your organizations and any anyone else that we work with. So people have already spent a lot of money on all these other tools. Why would they buy Tanium in addition to these other tools and what makes us different, really? Yeah. So another question that we get a lot and I actually have a graphic with me today. So I'm going to go ahead and. I'm a visual person, so I think there's a lot of value in being able to understand visually kind of where we we play. So what you'll notice here on the screen is you can see we have the different types of solutions that exist in the market today. And where Tanium is going to play is this asset visibility, patching, compliance, and management with Tanium. I use the words very intentionally, like a holistic platform approach, because we're going to start with that preventative or more um, preparation piece of security. So this is your your hygiene, patching, um, updating applications, you know, making sure that your hardening guidelines are actually being respected. And you'll see here, when we have up at the top, we have known malware, known file attacks, um, that's going to be kind of like your AV, that's what you're blocking against. Anything that's already got a signature, that's going to be your, your kind of first tool set. When you talk now about endpoint detection and response software, you're gonna have a little bit more coverage into maybe unknown malwares, unknown file attacks, but you're still having more more coverage than you would with some type of traditional uh, AV solution. And so to be clear here, the blue bars are not Tanium, right? These are your other products in the environment. Exactly. So what you'll notice, those two are, I think, the way that we talk security today, a lot of times in the security space. Um, You know, we think about detection and automating, uh, um, automating some of that proactive prevention piece. And that's going to be where you fall in line with these other tool sets. Now, when you have a platform approach, you get that capability by uh, proactive patching, proactive, you know, just cleanup um, of all these different threats in the environment. But we also get that huge chunk at the end that is unique to Tanium. And this is unique to threat response and Tanium in general. So what happens when there's a hardware-based breach? Or what happens when you have an adversary that's using lol bins and maybe doing privilege escalation with not malware? They're just using binaries that are native to the environments that they're on. And they're using those in a way that helps them move laterally and helps them escalate privileges, right? The next thing that we have here, what happens if there's a supply chain breach? You know, in those initial phases, 
your AV or your other tools are not gonna necessarily detect. But when you have Tanium, you can quickly identify those versions that are vulnerable in the environment. You can create policies to remove them. You can update software, you can update applications. Again, there's a more coverage that you have with threat response. And the last one are more of those modern malicious file attacks. So anything that's not commodity, anything that's more sophisticated, threat response you'll see is gonna allow you to do that deep investigation. And then once you've painted that picture of what happened on the endpoint, you have the power of the platform. Think of it as like big brother has eyes on everything. And once you have that visibility into all your endpoints, you're really able to properly scope and then create the appropriate remediation policy. And that's the flexibility of Tanium and threat response having up to millisecond visibility into everything that's happening in the environment and also really understanding what that remediation should look like. I think the scoping is a really key point there because I've seen this with other customers. When, when, when an event happens, you need the first thing you need to know is what is the impact, how many machines are impacted. And Tanium is really good at that fast scoping. So Stephanie, tell me about use cases. You talk to a lot of customers. What are the most popular things people use threat response for? Yeah. I think the most common use cases that we get are really to investigate and respond to, to these threats, right? More sophisticated threats. So with Tanium threat response, we can kind of take into account detections from different places. What you're empowered to do within threat response and what our customers do primarily is they take the intel that they're using and they take maybe these other kind of tips that the, in, the, the cyber threat intel team has given them or the network team through, looking through different network logs that we have given them. And they're able to investigate in a deep, deep investigation on that single system. With threat response, we can look historically, we can look at current state and we can look on disk. And once they have that investigation, to your point, that scoping part is really key because scoping is so hard if you don't have real-time visibility. And that's where Tanium gives you, like I said, I consider it kind of like that big brother. You have eyes on everything real time. So you're not querying for data that's even 10, 15 minutes old because you can know right now who's connected to this domain or who's connected to this IP address, You know what domains are being resolved for, what processes are running, and this is right now. So before, you know, when you're investigating a threat, it's sometimes kind of daunting. You're like, okay, do I pull the trigger? Do I quarantine this machine and potentially detonate some ransomware? Or do I respond and tip the attacker off that I know that they're there? And what gives you the assurance that it's okay to respond is that confidence of knowing, well, you've already looked across the rest of the enterprise and you know exactly where they have footholds, you know where they've established persistence, and you're now able to confidently make that, you know, remediation decision to start that cleanup in your enterprise. So scoping, hunting, cleanup, there's a lot of things that threat response does. Can you do a quick demo? Maybe show us what are some yeah. of your favorite cool features? Because I know I've got my favorite cool features, but I know the first time you go into threat response as a user, there's a lot there to sort through. Where do you think are some of the benefits for people, you know, to get very quickly? Yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Um, there's a lot of cool stuff that exists in threat response. Um, that, you know, I think gives you that power of scoping that we were just talking about. It's not super, um, super like in your face in the UI. And so let's start, for example, we're going to just jump to the alerts page. And those of you that are, are watching this video have very likely jumped in here and have started to investigate alerts in your own enterprise. So what you'll see here, I'm going to just filter it down to process events because this is what I care about. And this event, this alert here looks most interesting to me because I see that I have a malicious hash, right? Now, let's say, for example, without going too much into the details, I can see I have a process here, this SVC host.exe. It doesn't look like it's running out of the legitimate directory. It, it looks like it's probably um, a different SVC host. And even just a brief overview of the ancestry, you know, seeing Chrome spawning cmd.exe, spawning PowerShell, again, it does not look like it's a legitimate process. So what I can do when we talk about scoping, I now have this kind of intel that's in-house because I've seen it in, in my own enterprise. And now I need to know, have I ever seen this anywhere else, right? I mentioned we have three sources of evidence with Tanium. We have real time, so um, anything that is currently you know, running, processes that are actively executing. We have data at rest, that's index, anything that's on disk, any um, files that maybe aren't 
um, you know, in active execution, any binaries like that, but they're just data at rest. And the last one is, is historical. So I'm going to pull up this trace executed processes sensor. And what this sensor is doing is it's looking in that historical database that every endpoint manages. And it's going to allow me to say, all right, I want to look back all time, you know, in the last last um, 90 days that we capture by default, I want to look back all time. And I want to get, you know, maybe 10 results for the hosts. And I want to make sure that I'm preserving that computer name. I want to see any process that is executed that has this hash specifically. Once I ask this question, what I'm doing is it's a quick query to figure out, okay, in the entire enterprise, who else has executed a process with this hash? Now, as these results are coming in, uh, I want to just mention that there are a number of different types of these sensors. So this one is trace executed processes. But what if I want to query across my enterprise for every file on disk that has password or PSWD in the file name, right? That visibility in real time, I, I get super excited about because it's not something that, you know, having worked in the security space, I had seen prior to Tanium. So you can see here, I have this one machine and I have telemetry about what time this was run at, more information, and I can pivot and get more information from this machine. I can quarantine the machine if I need to. I can even connect directly into this machine um, in threat response, browse a file system, download that file. I can delete the file from disk. So this is one of the parts that gets me most excited because it's that that workflow of, okay, you're in, you're digging into an alert. And right now this alert holds value and is important and relevant on this one machine. But what I care about is the rest of my enterprise. And how do I find out if it's relevant elsewhere? Questions like this, you know, real time data coming back to you uh, with the platform. You know, that's interesting that you point out, I asked you, what are your favorite threat response features? And everybody's expecting the module interface and you go take us to interact. And that's fun because one of my customers told me, I said, you know, what do you like best about threat response? Where do you spend your time? They said, well, we actually use the sensors and interact because we can query the indexes yep. and uh, the activity on the database. And it's really handy for that scoping type operation. Yeah, and you think about kind of like more targeted monitoring and the way this is like the part that gets me most excited with the platform, I can use threat response in conjunction with connect and use something called a new items filter, right? I only want to send the differences. It's basically running a diff each time the question runs on whatever I've defined either as a baseline or I can have it learn continuously. So what happens if I want to monitor, you know, um, the any anybody gets added to local admins on a domain controller, right? Or more targeted machines, more sensitive machines. You can now create these workflows and use the platform to send that data to a SIM. You can generate an email notification every day that says, hey, we saw something that wasn't the, there the last time we ran, right? So it's that kind of like intertwined connectivity between all the different modules to really give you this holistic understanding of what your enterprise looks like and how you best secure it. Now, folks, we have barely scratched the surface on threat response today. This lady teaches sessions that converge. If you've not been to one of her converge sessions on getting the most value out of threat response, I really want to encourage you to check that out. Because both of us have been teaching at Converge the last three years, and her sessions are always packed. So when you see Converge roll around this November, look for uh, Stephanie's session on maximizing the value of threat response. Now, also, I know we're working on some new things this year, and this is a public audience. And normally we ask our customers to go talk to their account team, but is there, can you give us any hints about what's coming next in threat response? Sure. So I will say the, um, at Tanium, we're very, you know, we listen to feedback. And so what we've done is through engaging with customers and through engaging with, you know, experts in the field, we've taken a lot of that feedback and put some really cool things in the platform and in threat response specifically. I'm, if you cannot tell, I'm even more excited about what we have to come. Um, and if you all that are watching this are interested to see kind of what I'm talking about and vaguely referring to, I'd encourage you to reach out to your account team and, and set up some time to talk with a PM so they can walk you through what's coming um, this year. There's a lot of really good stuff. I know I'm excited. And what I 
what helps me a lot is if I look back just even at the last year, the innovation that we put into threat response, and I've walked from my customers through those upgrades and they've been able to see the new value. And one thing we didn't even mention today is that this works cross-platform. So Windows, Mac, and Linux, you've got this kind of visibility. And again, maybe it's my ignorance, but I'm not aware of other tools in the industry that give you this visibility and scope and scale, even on a cross-platform basis. Yeah, you, so, think about, you think about an attacker, they're not limiting to Windows. Like they're, you know, they're going wherever is most opportune. So to have, again, like you're saying, that visibility cross-platform um, all in a single pane of glass, I agree. It's, it's something that adds a lot of value that, um, that we do. And then you can pivot to the rest of the platform, like you said, for patching and deploying those upgrades and so forth. Stephanie, thank you for joining us on the show today. And I've got a little wrap up slide here just to uh, recap our takeaways today. So from the threat response Tanium platform here, uh, we do preparation. So that's what uh, Stephanie was talking about with laying down the patches in advance so you don't have the mess on endpoint five, right? Investigation, response, we are differentiated by that flexibility that we get and even custom detections. We didn't talk a lot about detection today, but when, when those other products aren't able to detect in real time, those changes that are not necessarily signature based, so that's where Titanium really shines. And then our biggest use case is in these sophisticated messy attacks, right? Where you need to scope quickly and then respond quickly. And then she said her favorite feature was using those sensors for that hunting and scoping at scale. And then talk to your account team if you'd like a roadmap, a discussion for more about what's coming next. And then we have a call to action for you today on the bit.ly link here, THR checklist for threat response checklist out on our community site. You knew you were going to get a link to the community out of our show today. We have provided for you a handy checklist of a few points to make sure that you're getting the most out of your Tanium threat response investment. And out there as well, you can discuss with um, our Tanium experts in the uh, Tanium community. Also, um, while you're there at the community site, go up to the top and click that little drop down for groups and notice there's endpoint security and endpoint management. That's basically security and ops. We have dedicated communities that you can request to join uh, for verified customers to discuss these topics and more like them with our experts here at Tanium and other customers in those forums. So avail yourselves of those community resources. And again, I would like to thank our guest today, Steph Stephanie Aceves, for walking us through the top features and threat response. And until next time, go Tanium. <laughs>